Hey guys, it's John with Super 701. This is part two of the short runway video I posted a couple of weeks ago. I must have really poked at some egos and hurt some feelings. Uh, that's the only thing I can figure. I've thought about this for several days and tried to just let it go, but my video was questioned and I was called a liar. Most of the time, I don't care. I have a pretty thick skin for comments, what people say. I mean, I, I, it's nature of the beast. If you post aviation content, you're going to get beat up. Unfortunately, a lot of people seem to judge it from a satellite view. So I felt this part two video was necessary to give my fans and viewers a chance to see why my strip's laid out the way it is and maybe a little better understanding of the obstacles and challenges that it has. And I also need to correct the claimed total length of my current runway. Safety first. One of the things that keeps getting commented on in the feedback is the tall grass. That's just been, it's been made fun of. And I feel like there's a very strong safety issue from the feedback I'm seeing. Um, and I get, I get that some of you guys out west are maybe used to prairie grass uh, in some of the arid climates where you don't get much rainfall. The grass we have here in the southeast, you know, East Tennessee, North Georgia, around where we fly locally, it is a safety hazard. We're in an area that gets between 50 and 80 inches of rain a year, so a lot of this undergrowth really takes off here, including the grass. Some of our grass gets exceptionally tall, and not only tall, but thick. It, it grows together in mats. We have grass that you can't walk through, you can't kick your feet through. We have full-grown dogs with lab mixes and that kind of stuff and our farm dogs are used to going through this grass you know they see it every day and they still have trouble with it sometimes i took this little clip the other day that you know to be able to get through it they have to bounce through it they can't just walk through it and if they try if they try to go through it fast or hit it fast walking or running without actually high stepping and jumping through it it'll claim them uh, they'll, they'll tumble in it'll, it'll grab them guys it'll do the exact same thing to an airplane so I'm on my runway less than 30 feet wide. It's close to 30, but it is less. Um, you know, if you get a main wheel off in it, with any kind of speed, the best you could hope for is a gentle ground loop. It escalates quickly from there. It'd be very easy to nose over, really to even completely flip an airplane. And I've seen this grass claim substantial damage to an airplane, so I, I really don't take that lightly. You have to be on the runway or it's the same difference as hitting a tree. You know, if you get in the grass and nose over, have a prop strike, ground loop and tear up a wing, that's no different than hitting a rock and tearing something up or ground looping or hitting a wing when you hit a rock or a tree or a stump or log or anything that these guys are out, out doing. It's no different. This is just as big of a hazard as any of those. There's a lot more to the story than what you see by a satellite view. When you actually get out and walk it, it's, it's, there, there's just a lot more to it. I measured the elevation difference from one side of the taxiway to the other. Within one wingspan in both directions from the middle of the taxiway is almost 30 feet difference in elevation. You can't see that from Google Earth. You can't even really see that good from the the videos I've posted, but hopefully this little clip will give you an idea of how much, how much drop off and how much incline there is. You have to watch one side closely so you don't drop off in the hole and completely destroy an airplane. You have to watch the other side because it's rising train and you have to watch your wingtip. So it's, it's, on a, it's on a pretty big banked angle, the taxiway is. And along with that, the reason I don't extend the runway past the driveway or maybe through the driveway and across. There are also dips and big swags on the other side of the driveway. I've got a bobcat park down in the bottom of one and it's, you know, it's probably eight or 10 feet deep just across the driveway from the end of the runway. It does have its own set of challenges and obstacles that'll just as easily destroy an airplane if you don't hit it right every single time. Some of the comments I've seen, you know, they talk about the runway and able to do touch and goes and that kind of stuff. Look guys, this is a one way strip. The elevation change from one end of the strip is substantial. You have rising terrain and some big old growth trees 
that you're approaching. So if you're if you're low enough to be able to touch your wheels on my runway in the landing situation, there's not enough room to be able to squeeze up through the taxi while off lining and try to climb out. And there's definitely not enough room to be able to climb out before you get to the trees and the rising terrain. Just not gonna happen. You guys have seen this 701 in competitions. It's, it's climb outs really about as good as it gets. I wouldn't even want to think about having to do a go around in this runway. All you're going to do is wind up in the trees. There's just, once you get low enough to be able to touch your wheels on the runway, you're committed. There's no go around. As I said in my first video, I, I do come around the corner there as I make my final base to final turn. It is possible to come into my strip straight in, but on that approach, there's a pretty good size hill and some tall dense trees, power lines, some other challenges if you try to do it that way. Making that left turn into the final in our pasture just seems like a nicer approach. Uh, you have to be able to turn at a relatively low speed, dodge trees doing that, but at least you don't have to come in steep and try to bleed off airspeed at the very bottom of the swag where my runway starts and try to get stopped before you get to the obstacles at the end of it. I like to keep it on our own property just in case there were some kind of trouble or something. Uh, at least we do have reasonably cleared. I might be able to dodge trees and stump holes and who knows what, but at least I won't be in someone's swimming pool or in trees or in a power line make the recovery a lot easier at least. It may not be a good habit to do it this way, but I generally come in low and slow and really kind of drag it across the threshold of my runway and then I can sit it down. Very rarely do I ever use more than 200 feet of my runway. I'm kind of known for Willie in my airplane when I'm moving around slow on the ground. I keep just enough power in there to keep the front tire up. But using my narrow taxiway for taxiing is a lot different than thinking you might be able to utilize it as part of a runway. You know, as a new pilot, really getting into this whole stool arena of aviation, I don't have a lot of hours, and a lot of the names that have been doing this for decades, some of them will say, you don't know what you don't know. And I get that, I respect that. I realize that I'm a fairly new pilot, my proficiency isn't nearly as good as some of the guys who have been doing this since I was in diapers and been out there destroying airplanes in crazy places they've taken them. That was kind of sketchy on my part to take that risk of first flight with an inexperienced pilot out of a short strip. I just had got my pilot's license, so I didn't have all the experience of the short takeoff landing, all that kind of stuff. I did go out, walked it over. I took distance with three different ways there. I, I used the four flight. I went ahead and used the Google Earth. And then I also have an app on the phone that we use to measure stuff in crop fills and that kind of stuff. So all three of them were within three or four feet of one another, which was actually kind of impressive. You have to know where the start and stop point are. You know, I, I go down and I see where the grass is and where it lines up with, with everything. I've got my start point. I come up and I come up to where the first limb is that would cause substantial damage to an airplane. That's where the measurement has to come from, right? I've got some friends that said, man, that is really, really tight. So I've cut out a couple more trees here recently from, from what I initially started flying. It's, it's actually a lot better shape now than it was two years ago. So when I use all three of the ways of measuring the runway, even Google Earth, all three of them come out less than 350 feet. Anyway, there's a reason my runway's laid out the way it is. I love to have better options and an easier accessible runway, uh, one, that's, one that's wider. Maybe not so much longer, but wider. And the thing is, I have to work with what I've got too. Uh, it costs several, several grand to get it in as good a shape as what it's in. What you don't see from the satellite view is all the big depressions and, and the hills and valleys, the differences in elevation that happen both from side to side and from one end to the other. There's, there's always someone out there with a bigger, faster airplane, a smaller runway that's more sketchy, that's more difficult to get into. I'm gonna put an invitation out on my video. It's not even a challenge, it's just an invitation. If you have a strip that's, let's say, is less than 400 feet, 
and you have some footage from it or maybe on your YouTube channel or something that you think's a cool, unique, maybe tight, maybe challenging, maybe not so much. You know, I just, if it's us under 400 feet, it has its own challenges anyway. Um, send me the footage. I really would love to see it. I'm not gonna brutally critique it. Um, I will, I'll share it on my channel. I'll share your link. Hopefully we can get it out there. I'd love to see it. I'm sure a lot of the other viewers would too. Anyway, shout out to all my fans and followers. I appreciate all the comments, uh, all the positive feedback and the, the messages you guys have sent dealing with this and all my videos for that matter. I, I've got some, some incredible friends in the, in the aviation community and in the YouTube community. So that being said, let's get back to flying and making better content. Thanks for watching. See ya. On the farm, we do use some of the old chemical jugs. You know, I'd, I'd advise anybody to use the jugs. You can go to pretty much any of your local farmers. They probably have, have these old used chemical jugs on hand. And you can put them out on your strip along the sides or wherever you'd like to mark, you know, measure off and mark. Uh, they have just a little bit of water in them. They won't blow away and all that kind of stuff with the prop wash. And they're, the white jug is actually really pretty easy to see once you get on short final. So it's, it's not that bad of a marker. I advise anybody to do it. It's probably the cheapest way to have a good marker to, to shoot name for for your short takeoff landing type stuff. The other thing about this jug is when you're on the lawnmower, it's easy to reach down, pick it up, mow around, sit it back down. You never have to get up to move anything. It's not a permanent fixture. So it's, it really just works. It's easy.